Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Susie with Gemini Connect and today we are talking about cameras for beginners. The more you take photos and the more you get traction on social media, you'll find that everyone from your grandma to your mom to your friends to your neighbors are going to ask you for a recommendation of what camera should I buy? And it's a tough question to answer, especially as more and more cameras get released. If you're a beginning photographer looking at investing in a camera, there are many routes you can go these days. You can go with a point and shoot, you can go with your smartphone, you can go with a mirrorless camera, you can go for the DSLR. There's a whole lot of options out there. And for most people, I'd recommend starting with your phone because it's the camera that you have on you and even professionals are using their phones these days to take photos and videos. So your phone is obviously one of the best choices. But if you're looking at investing into an actual camera because you're serious about maybe taking your photography to the next level, I don't recommend a point and shoot because a point and shoot, although it's small and convenient, it's not something you can build upon because that lens is stuck to the camera. So I'd recommend looking at an interchangeable lens camera instead. And so I have three of those in front of me right here. And this camera, despite the size of it, you might think that it's a point and shoot, but it's actually an interchangeable lens camera. I can take this lens off and I can throw on any other Sony E-mount lens. This is the 55 1.8, or I can get a little crazy and use this little adapter here. Attach that to the front. And I can take a Canon lens like this guy and I can put that on this camera and I can turn it into a little bit of a mini beast. Or I can get a little crazier and even take this giant Canon lens and put it on this tiny little camera. And it actually works. So the whole point is that with interchangeable lenses, you just have a lot more flexibility that you don't have a point and shoot. And so interchangeable lens is the way to go. But even in the world of interchangeable lens cameras, you have a lot of options to consider. First of all, you can go for a traditional DSLR. This is the Canon 6D Mark I and the 24-7D to f2.8 lens. And this is a fantastic camera. I still use this all the time, but as you can see, there's a giant size difference and there's also a big price difference. And DSLRs as well, I think are a little antiquated. They don't have the newest, most modern features and everything is kind of shifting towards mirrorless. So unless you already have a DSLR or you happen to get a great deal on it, I think DSLRs are not necessarily the best camera for beginners today. Instead, I'd consider a mirrorless camera. And both of these cameras right here are mirrorless. Uh, again, this is the a6300 with the kit lens. And this is the Fujifilm X-T3 with the 18-55 to lens. And although I love Fuji a lot, I would not necessarily recommend this camera for beginners either. Because there's a lot of buttons on top. And unless you're familiar with film cameras or you have the desire to really learn Fuji cameras, and photography, it's not really the best choice because you don't have an easy way to get to auto mode. And for honestly, for a lot of beginners, they're gonna use auto a lot. And to get to auto here, you just have to, I mean, there are at least three buttons that you have to set and it's not the fastest thing to do. So for that reason, I'm also throwing out the Fuji, not great for beginners unless they had the extra desire to learn this camera really well. So there's also Canon. Canon has the M50 out. M50, you know, there's a lot of people that swear by it and they say it's a really great camera. And being a Canon shooter myself with Canon DSLRs, I have no doubt that Canon probably has done a pretty good job with their mirrorless camera. The only thing that concerns me about Canon is how slow they are to release new features to consumers. Because uh, even with the M50, they've curbed things like 4K, you're not getting a true 4K video resolution out of that camera. And there's just small little things that are being withheld from Canon cameras that Sony has been putting in their little mirrorless cameras since the very start. And so I have a trust issue with Canon. I'm not sure what it is that they're going to do with their mirrorless line and if it's going to be a good long-term investment. And so for that reason, I hesitate to recommend Canon mirrorless cameras at the moment. Same with Nikon, although I think Nikon is doing a slightly better job at it. 
as opposed to Sony, because Sony has had some version of this camera out since 2014, and even the original A6000 was a bestseller and still is one of the bestsellers today. And so for that reason, and the fact that you now have four different cameras within this A6000 line, I have to recommend the Sony as the ideal camera for beginners or intermediate photographers. And another thing with Sony and interchangeable lens cameras in general is that you do have to think of it as a long-term investment because you might get the kit that comes with a lens, but really your big investment is this right here, like the camera body, because you can always replace this lens and you can upgrade it. You can spend more money on the lens. And I actually recommend doing that as opposed to spending $2,000 on a new camera body that you're not even really sure why you're paying $2,000 for that body. Pay $1,000 or less for this little body, take that other $1,000 and invest in a good quality lens or a library of lenses because those lenses are the ones that you're going to use on your body and you can always replace your camera body over time. And for most beginners, it's realistic to recommend something that's slightly more affordable and not tell them to get a $1,000 camera. You just have to consider the fact that when you get a new camera, it's not just that upfront cost for the camera, you're going to have to invest in other accessories as well at the very least a camera bag and the other thing to keep in mind if you're on a budget is that you can always buy used camera gear you can buy used camera bodies or used camera lenses or just any accessories they're available used on Amazon on Adorama B&H they all have used sections and they'll offer you pretty good gear at a fraction of the price I myself have never bought a used camera body, but I have bought tons of used camera lenses because lenses hold their value extremely well if you take good care of them. I bought most of my lenses on Craigslist and I've managed to score some really great deals at a fraction of the price than if I had bought them new. And all of those used lenses are still working really well today. And so buying used gear is definitely an option. And the other thing is you can also sell your gear. If you keep it in really good condition and in a few years, if you decide that, hey, the A6300 isn't, isn't, isn't quite cutting it for me and I'd rather upgrade to an A7R3, then you can sell this guy on Craigslist or Amazon or to your friend. And that actually is what's gonna to happen to this A6300. I've had it for a few years, I love it to pieces, but the truth is I just don't use it anymore. And so I am gonna sell this to a friend of mine. Keep in mind that buying and selling used gear is definitely a thing and you should try to do it as much as possible to save money and also to just make sure that your gear goes off to, to better hands if you're not using it. If you'd like to hear more about how I approach buying and selling used camera gear, because I've done it a lot over the past few years, then let me know in the comments below. And I'd be happy to do another video talking about used camera gear and how to get the most out of it. So with that said, I'd like to turn it over to you. What camera would you recommend to other beginners? Would you go with a Sony or would you go with a Fujifilm, a Canon, a DSLR, a point and shoot? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.